Welcome to the introductory presentation for the course. This presentation is intended to provide an introduction to the statistical methods we will cover in the course and will also make some general observations about the role of statistics in the clinical research process. Statistics are the only tools by which an opening can be cut through the formidable thicket of difficulties that bars the path of those who pursue the science of man. Sir Francis Galton was a prolific scientist who conceived of the standard deviation, created the statistical concept of correlation, and was also a pioneer in the use of the normal distribution. Time has shown Galton's quote to be true. The evidential basis of modern clinical research is grounded in statistical theory and methodology. Clinical research projects that successfully combine rigorous statistical and design methodology with clinical science and expertise are those generally found in today's top medical journals. This course is designed to emphasize conceptual understanding of key statistical principles rather than a an ability to perform statistical calculations. That doesn't mean you won't have to perform statistical calculations. We will have you analyzing data in short order. However, the goal is to provide a conceptual foundation that will facilitate your ability to be a critical appraiser of clinical research reports, enhance the quality of your clinical research collaborations, and enhance your knowledge of the role of statistics and statistical theory in the clinical research process. Before discussing the process of analyzing data, let's visualize the scientific process using a concept map to provide some context for our discussion. An observation reveals some pattern, which leads to a question framed as a hypothesis tested by gathering data in an experiment, which may lead to more questions, which may lead to more observations, which may lead to a conclusion. How does the process of data analysis fit into this paradigm? We have a hypothesis about a population of interest in which we conduct a design study. We collect a random sample of data from this population now we are ready to do some statistics. We first calculate some descriptive statistics for the sample. The goal here is to use basic statistical quantities such as the mean, median, and standard deviation to provide a description of the sample we have collected. It's important to note that at this point in the process we are not focused on making population inferences. We are simply trying to understand the characteristics of the sample we have collected in order to know who we are analyzing and to which groups we can reasonably generalize our inferences. Note that this descriptive process usually includes graphical displays in addition to numerical summaries. We will introduce and discuss both numerical and graphical descriptive summaries in future presentations. After this descriptive process, we are ready to make population inferences. The specific statistical quantities we use for making inferences, that is, the inferential statistics, are a function of the research hypothesis, the study design, and the primary outcome variable being used to evaluate our hypothesis. The process of making inferences generally involves the calculation of p-values and confidence intervals, each of which we will discuss throughout the course. Although interesting, post hoc empirical discoveries made while analyzing data generally do not have the same validity as hypotheses that preceded collection of the data. The hypothesis or hypotheses that motivated the design of the study are and should be the basis of primary inferential claims in the study. From a statistical perspective, we analyze the collected sample of data to produce an estimate of the population measure of interest. We then calculate a p-value associated with that population estimate based on the magnitude and variability of the estimate, and using that p-value make a conclusion about the hypothesis. Too frequently in clinical research, the p-value is misinterpreted, its importance overstated, and its proper context is not appreciated. The p-value is not 
the sole arbiter of the truth or falsehood of a research hypothesis. In general, there is a hierarchical nesting of contexts within which p-values must be weighed and interpreted when being used to make inferential claims about a hypothesis. The statistical context in which a given p-value is calculated must be considered. The research design used to collect the data that generated the p-value must also be considered. The results of prior research studies on the same subject must be taken into consideration. Additionally, both the plausibility of the hypothesis under study and the magnitude of the effect observed must be weighed in relation to the relevant clinical science and knowledge about the hypothesis under study. In this course, we will introduce the p-value, discuss its calculation, its proper interpretation in the clinical research environment, and we will address some of these controversies and common misinterpretations. It seems important at this point to make note of some examples of things that statistical calculations cannot overcome. The population of interest is more diverse than the population sample. Data is collected from a convenience sample rather than a random sample. In other words, data with a bad pedigree. The measured variable is a proxy for the variable you are really interested in. An example of this is the use of coronary artery calcium scores, or C-reactive protein, as proxies for cardiovascular mortality risk. The question being analyzed is not really the question you want answered. This can occur, for example, when a study is being conducted using an administrative database, the structure of which imposes restrictions both on the available variables that can be analyzed and the research questions that can be answered using those variables. Statistics is both a science and an art. The science is what we teach in the classroom. Examples of that include what is a normal distribution, what is a p-value, and how do you calculate one. The art of statistics is driven by experience and knowledge regarding which assumptions are most crucial to the performance of a statistical method and which can be relaxed without too much harm. We will focus mostly on the scientific aspects of statistics in this course, although we will try to also pass along some of the art. It's important to remember that everything we do is an approximation. In particular, the sampling of desired populations can be extremely difficult in clinical research. It's often the case that you may need to form questions that approximate your real questions and study populations that closely approximate the real populations that you're interested in studying. And to end, I will leave you with a statistical quote, which, while humorous, is also quite true and too often can be the source of flawed clinical research analyses. The manipulation of statistical formulas is no substitute for knowing what one is doing.